Good morning, friends. This is Janie Seltzer, and it is a joy to be with you today. It's always a joy to be with you, and I look forward to sharing with you in this garden devotional what God has put on my heart that perhaps will resonate within yours. As you're coming on, if you would let me know who you are and where you are so I can give you a little love, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing your names come up and um, uh, your thumbs up and your um, all kinds of ways that I know that you're there. I see you coming on. If you would also please be mindful to like and share this right now on your Facebook page. I hope everyone can hear me well. Um, let me just double check. There, I turned the uh, volume up a little bit. I'm a little bit early coming on. But I can tell you that here in San Diego, I'm in, there we go. Hello, hello, Heather. So good, I see you coming. Um, it, here in San Diego, it's a blustery day. And I uh, can't help but think about Winnie the Pooh. So I went around early this morning to check on something on the side of the house here in the garden. And I was surprised by a very heavy dew that was falling. It, I didn't know any rain was in the forecast and I see the sun coming out, which is good news, but it was, um, it was a heavy dew and then it, it, it got heavier and heavier and I was actually watering some things and realized I didn't need to water because what was a dew was steadily becoming a gentle rain and I identify with the green of God's world and know that the earth rejoices when the rain comes. It made me think so much about how vitally important the dew of the Holy Spirit is in our life. Let me slow down and tell you that I'm Janie Seltzer or Janie Poet and I am so honored to be the spiritual director for the Zig Ziglar family around the world as well as here in Carlsbad, California at Hidden Life Ministries. Mr. Rubear, my um, companion here in the garden, is sitting comfortably beside me. We're not going up on the hill because of the weather conditions. Oh, it's, uh, it's not very, doesn't look very blustery, but it was. I want uh, to tell you that it was interesting as I was coming on this morning, I happened to see on the Ziegler Facebook page, the wor simple words, keep focused. And I thought, how appropriate is that? Because my question for you today is, are you focused on your spiritual life? Um, Mr. Ziegler certainly was, and I certainly am. And I pray that you are because we are either flourishing or we're floundering. And if we're floundering spiritually, we get off the track. Uh, we might be uh, focused on business and perhaps our business is just flourishing. But um, if your spiritual life is diminishing, um, there's a problem there. If your social life is flourishing and you're having parties and enjoying yourself with all of your friends, well, that's fun. But if your spiritual life is diminishing, then there's a problem. Um, there's a, a, a very important aspect to being a healthy, whole human being from the viewpoint of the Lord God Almighty. Um, we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with all of our mind and love our neighbor as ourself. And if we do not follow those that, that pattern and flourish spiritually, then and we go off in other tangents and flourish in business or socially or even in our family, but our, uh, and the reason I mentioned family, I'm thinking about the wheel of life that Mr. Ziegler talked about. It was, it's, he, he emphasized, as does the whole organization, as do I, that all of life must remain in balance. 
we can be totally focused on community issues and that's a good thing but if we're totally focused on community issues to the neglect of our soul that's not a good thing uh, the wheel must be healthy in all aspects in order to run properly in order for the for any machine or any car or we it's sort of like the tire has to be fully inflated and you say well that's way too much i'm overwhelmed with that well here's the ticket if you're focused on flourishing spiritually first if you make that the first priority of your day make the main thing the main thing then you will be informed in all of these other areas and if you're not then there's something wrong there too for the Lord has plans for you. He has a purpose for you. He has a way that you can make the difference in the world. But if we take our eyes off the master, if we go in our own uh, fast paced direction without inquiring of the Lord, we're going to go amok. Now, I, I um, was drawn to John 15 uh, verses 1 through 5. I'd like for you to begin turning in your Bibles to John 15, where, where we're going to examine the vine life, what Jesus had to say to us about how to make the main thing, the main thing. And um, I'm also going to parallel that with Isaiah chapter 5, because if we understand the context of John 15 in the New Testament, the undergirding, the message that Jesus was delivering to his disciples, then we will even, it will enrich us even more. And perhaps you and I will experience the dew from heaven as I wish to pray right now. Holy Father, I thank you for my friends around the world and I thank you that they are eager to hear a word from your spirit. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak through me, that you would touch those places in each one's soul that need strengthening, that they might be flourishers and not flounder, that they might be attentive and not lose their way. Oh, Father, have mercy on us, for we need your Holy Spirit. We need your guidance. We need your helping hand. We need the flow of your healing strength within us to enable us to live in a way that is pleasing in your sight and that makes a difference here on planet Earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are at our right hand. You tell us that you are our loving Lord and you will never leave us or forsake us. I pray for any of my friends who feel um, lost, discouraged in any way, um, floundering about, um, deflated. Uh, they just can't get up and get going. Lord God, would you empower them? Would you fill in the holes of their soul that need your loving, tentative, presence. Thank you for hearing us. For the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray. Amen. You know, speaking of flourishing, speaking of 
keeping focused. Um, just a little personal note. I have been refurbishing my kitchen cabinets over the last couple of days. It's been a very rewarding work and very hard work. I had old cupboards that could have been replaced, but I decided perhaps I should dive in and give it a whirl myself. And so I did. And the results are looking pretty good, my friends tell me. Um, and I've been hard at work doing that. Um, in doing so, when you're exhausted, you sort of don't want to take time to eat healthy, right? So you grab the chips or the nuts or um, whatever, another cup of coffee to keep working, keep moving. And um, doing that is dangerous because you're not being attentive to your body. And so this morning I jumped on the scales and I was horrified to discover I had joined, I had joined, I had um, added two pounds to my weight. Now two pounds is not a big deal. I can get those off and will get them off because I got on the scales, right? But what, what it brought to mind is how the word of God is like getting on the scales of our life, our spiritual life. If we're not attentive to the word, then we, we, um, we flounder, we get a little bit off the path. If we don't pay attention for two or three days, we get a little further away. If we, if we keep going away from the word, we can end up down a very dark path. I um, had a conversation with a friend who uh, I didn't, it's a new friend. I didn't know too much about this friend, one of, one of my listening friends. And I asked questions and uh, about this, this person's life. And um, he was glad to tell me that he had been for a long time off on a very dark path of the occult because his, he had sort of a, a dark heritage where his mother, his grandmother was into the occult. And how alluring that was and yet how awakening it was because when he would lead seances and such, he got a, a view of the dark, dark world that exists, that is real. I share that because while most of us won't perhaps end up in that place, um, it is an example of what can happen if we wander away from the Good Shepherd. And so I, I bring you to attention. I bring you to the Word to call you, uh, because I love you, to attentiveness, to remain, as Jesus said in John chapter 15, just five verses right now, it, very important verses. In John, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that he so that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Hmm. We have looked at these verses before, I'm certain we have, although I couldn't tell you when, but we must come back to them. It is not knowing the words in our head. It is the knowing in our soul. And that is why we keep reminding ourselves as the Spirit guides, He reminds us to be reminded of the cruciality of abiding in Christ. 
we must abide in Christ. If we do not, we can do nothing. We can do nothing of eternal consequence. You see, we can do a lot without Jesus. Oh yes, we can build a great business. We can become millionaires. Some become billionaires apart from Jesus but they're poor in spirit in the worst sort of way. There is a poverty of spirit that if not recognized, there are, they will have eternal life um, apart from God. And that is a great tragedy. You can be rich on earth and bankrupt at the same time. And yet Jesus said, you are blessed, as Pastor Don and I have been describing, if you recognize you're bankrupt and turn back to him and have, you will receive eternal life, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. But apart from him, you can do nothing. Now, I said that I want to parallel this with Isaiah chapter five, but before I go there, let me tell you something that is very um, interesting and cool. When it says that every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, I discovered that the word prune, prune in the Greek also means cleans. So let me and, and that's why later the word clean comes up because the Holy Spirit of God speaking through the word of God, which was spoke, first spoken by the living word of God, even Jesus, knows exactly what is being said. Every word is precise. And so he says that every branch that does bear fruit, he cleans, he prunes is how it's translated in most versions, but I love that it's, he, he's cleaning us when he prunes us. You see, that's the purpose of staying focused. We need to stay clean. We need to be pure in heart because then we can see God, hear God, stay on the path with God and receive from God the dew from heaven. Oh, Rue, let's, let's pipe down. Uh-oh, Rudy is, um, he's going to quiet down. He heard something and he's alerting me to it. And I think that the wind blew the door shut and that's what he's alerting me to. Thank you, Rue Bear. All right, so that's the first thing I want you to recognize is that when tough times are happening, when you get on the scales and realize that you have been neglecting your soul and you are, um, you're sad about that, you're, um, you're lost and you realize that you need to be found, um, God only wants to clean you and get you back into a place where you can flourish. If I didn't prune this garden, it would be completely, um, and it sort of needs a little pruning right now, it would be completely wild. And that brings me to Isaiah chapter five. Um, you s let, me, let me point out to you that Jesus said, I am the true vine. He is being very specific here. Not only is he telling us that we need to follow him because he's the way, the truth, and the life, he's also speaking deeply into the hearts of the covenant people of God who have lost their way. And they know what Jesus is referring to, which is from Isaiah chapter five. If you will turn there with me right now. Isaiah five is talking about the vineyard of the Lord. And let me read it to you, just the first five verses. Let me sing. Hmm. It's interesting, I said, let me, and then the, the verse begins with let me. Let me sing for my beloved. 
my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. hill. Now, this is Isaiah speaking, and he's calling the Lord God, my beloved. So let me start that over again, and I want you to think of it as Isaiah intends it. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and he hewed out a vine that in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. Oh, now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I have not done for it? Hmm. When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? Okay, wow. Um, Isaiah continues with the ways that Israel has distressed his beloved. Are you distressing the beloved? Am I distressing the beloved? It is not my heart and it is not my will to ever distress my beloved. I desire above all things to keep my heart in line with his heart. I desire to make him my first priority of the day and I do because I have discovered through the years what happens when I get off the track with my beloved. Not only is his heart grieved, which is what exactly we learn in the Old Test, in the New Testament rather, that we can grieve the Holy Spirit of God by our waywardness. And that word is exactly the same word that, that um, is used, which Pastor Don and I talked about on Sunday. If you missed the message, blessed are those who grieve, for they shall be comforted. You see, Jesus turns everything around in the Sermon on the Mount, and he calls those blessed who grieve because a true grief, a true repentance of heart, brings the very best from God. And if we don't grieve, we don't grieve over our sins and grieve over our losses, we suffer. Um, but if we do grieve over our sins and our losses, we enable the Spirit of God to rush in alongside us, to comfort us with the compassion that only God can give. I don't know if you are grieving today. I don't know if, if you need the comfort of God, but I can assure you that he is eager to comfort you. And his comfort is not found in any place on earth except by the spiritual life that Christ gives as we call on his name. Call unto me, he says, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you have not known. His comfort is astonishing. So if you have done any of the things or are living 
in the sinfulness of Israel, as Isaiah points out in Isaiah chapter 5. And I'm not going to read all of it, but let me just quickly tell you the six woes of Israel. They had become greedy. They had become people of party spirit. They were always looking for the next party. They became liars. They twisted the truth. They were giving out bribes. They were bribing judges so that their cases would, would lean in their direction against the poor and the needy. And they were full of pride. Those were the six woes of Israel. Those were the reasons that God um, had become so distressed. Abba, Father, had become so distressed. The vine dresser had literally done everything possible to give to Israel a fertile and beautiful um, vineyard. But instead, wild grapes were growing all over Israel. And that's because their hearts had left and become distracted. If you have become distracted and find yourself greedy and full of party spirit and liars and twisting truth and giving out bribes and are full of pride, then I encourage you to grieve. I do. I encourage you to grieve. You, God is grieving. Will you join him in grieving? It's like, it's, it becomes a perfect partnership of grief. You know, I saw this this morning. We're talking about grieving and the beauty of grieving to receive comfort. But what we didn't talk about on Sunday is the grief of God. And so we can satisfy the heart of God by turning our grief into mourning for sin and joining him in grieving and finding in that place a beautiful union, a, a spirit that will turn our mourning into dancing. How do we become people that flourish? We mourn and then we dance. We mourn our wildness, the wild grapes, and we let the Spirit of God crush us into beautiful, beautiful people of praise. I wrote down a couple of things, and I will end with this. We can flourish in the Spirit of God, in surprising ways, with surprising guidance and perfect calm, with spiritual strength, if we surrender to His plan for our life, if we surrender to His purpose and His perfect will, and if we remain in the vine. But, we can only do that if we recognize that our spiritual life is a serious matter to God and we become attentive to it daily. By saying, awake my soul. By saying, attune my soul to the will of God. And if we say, alive my soul in Christ today. So three A's, awake, attune, and alive. Do you wish to be awake, attuned, and alive in Christ? Then it's possible right now. Get back on the scales right now. Get back in to the heart of God right now. You will find love, you will find joy, you will find peace, and you will find the dew of heaven surging through you. I have a poem 
that I will end with called Dew. As plants renew in early morn, so spirit spills fluid gold, fills pores, heals wounds as strength seeps through, renews joy, warm weight, the bright of life flows unseen from a living well, presence of the living God. Ah, sweet drink of life. Friends, it is my prayer, it is my desire, but most of all, it is the desire of the living God that the dew of the Holy Spirit make you people that flourish in every area of your life, in balance, attuned, alive in Christ. May it be so. That is true. Shalom. I pray that you will stay in line with the Lord Jesus as he loves on you and gives you his peace. That is my prayer today. And so I say to you, share this with your friends that they too may become aligned with the Lord God Almighty. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being with us. And most of all, by the spirit of the living God, I say, be alive in him. Until next time, hope to see you Sunday morning. Goodbye.